Good morning, friends. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona, and I welcome you to this televised liturgy. Good morning, everyone. My name is Father Bill Coolis, and I'm retired priest of the Diocese of Winona, Rochester. And I welcome all of you that are here today for this celebration. Plus, I'd also like to welcome those that are watching us on TV or on the net. We are welcome, and we are glad to have you with us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sinfulness so we might be more prepared to celebrate these mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. The Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you, pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air, and he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, and all wild animals, but none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man. And while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up his place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. 
When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman. For out of her man, this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one flesh. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, he for a little while was made lower than the angels, that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the leader to their salvation perfect through suffering. He who consecrates and those who are being consecrated all have one origin. Therefore, he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Pharisees approached Jesus and asked, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your heart, he wrote this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And people were bringing children to him that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked them. When Jesus saw this, he became indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. 
do not prevent them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. Amen, I say to you, whoever does not accept the kingdom of God like a child will not enter it. Then he embraced them and blessed them, placing his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many theories arise as to why Jesus, who in other parts of the law, would be able to make exceptions, but here he has a strict interpretation. We should remember that when Jesus was a child, before he was born, Mary was threatened with divorce by Joseph, and so he nearly was a victim of divorce. And in Mary's time, the woman that divorced might as well be dead because there was no future for her in any way. But Jesus was more opposed to divorce than just that. What he was really saying was not so much the matter of what would happen to the spouses, as really the matter of it's so contrary to his very way of thinking. His thinking that the law meant that we should love all peoples, even our enemies. And enemies to us doesn't simply mean someone who's on the other side of the battle line. It can be anyone who creates tension and difficulty and anger for us. And that's where marriage was so important. There was a way to say, I will commit myself to helping this person if they are angry, if they are hurt, if they are suffering. Even if they threaten me, I could respond with love because that's what Jesus was doing. Time and again, he was telling us to forgive. Time and again, he was saying that in any relationship, that it's more important for us to remain close to that person than to walk away. It's important for us to observe the commandments of God, that we are to love those and help those who are in need. For those many times who are very angry or irritable are often people that are very hurt inside and we need to help them heal that hurt. Help them so that they will not be caught in the trap of simply living their lives, constantly put in a condition where they will be put away from God and from others. May we then remind ourselves that we have a mission, a mission to anyone that is around us that is disagreeable, one that we can help by reaching out to them when they are in need and helping them in their times of sorrow and stress so that we might be able to lift them up. That's the purpose of our life and marriage, that we help one another and we live in a way of joy. May we always then remind ourselves of the commitment that we made at marriage, at our wedding, and the exchange of vows of saying, I will help you no matter what the circumstances are. I will be there to lift you up and to help you overcome your difficulties. Then we become the true disciples of God. We are ones then that will no longer have to question divorce, but see that there is a greater good in helping those who are in need. For those that are violent, they sometimes just need a peaceful calm, a saying that help me understand why you're so angry, because I can see that you are so hurt. When that happens, we can change many things in people's lives. May we understand then the need for always to see reconciliation because the Lord has been great to us and has forgiven us our moments of anger, our moments of depression, our moments of violence. He's always there to help us and is faithful to us. May we be imitators of that loving God who comes into our world, brings his life with us every day and makes us know that his love is always there. For that love Jesus gave even his life on the cross, when he was suffering the cruelty of so many people, he could say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, Light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, 
and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death of the Spirit and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess to our baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Reminding ourselves how much God loves us and that he will never separate himself from us, we ask him to hear these prayers. That priests will be men of dedicated faith, passionate prayer, and unfailing self-sacrifice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our keeping of respect life Sunday today will move all people at all times to revere the gift of human life from natural conception to a natural death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all married couples, for a strengthening of the sacrament of married life in our nation and our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For children, that they will be shielded from all harmful influences and led into a deep and lasting friendship with the Lord Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the farmers working out in the fields during this time, that they will enjoy the benefits of good weather, safety from all harm, and a just compensation for their labors, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill and for all who have passed, marked with the sign of faith, especially of family and friends, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh God, our Father, you have given us all things, and you have helped us to love, even when it is so difficult. May we never turn away from you, but always love in every way possible, as we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands, and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which we are pleased to redeem us through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For when your children were scattered afar by sin, through the blood of your Son and the power of the Spirit, you gathered them again to yourself, that a people formed as one by the unity of the Trinity, made the body of Christ and the temple of the Holy Spirit, might to the praise of your manifold wisdom be manifest as the Church. And so, in company with the choir of angels, we praise you and with joy we proclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and for by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercies we may all be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, by peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer to each other that sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament which we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for gathering with me today in the celebration of this Eucharist. A special thanks to our choir and to our lector. I certainly appreciate your work. And to all of us on watching us on TV, we are coming today from 
St. Rose of Lima Parish in Lewiston and the cluster that's connected with it. And so we extend our warmth and our hospitality to you. And we hope that today you will have visitors that will refresh your day and make you feel welcome at home. For our TV Mass is our way of making sure you are connected to your parish. For many of you spent many years in your parish, and now we do not wish to see you abandoned, but to love you every day. And so may this day be a blessing for you and every day of your life. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Good morning. This is Bishop John Quinn of the Diocese of Winona. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday's televised Mass. I hope it has brought you spiritual joy and comfort this day. Our broadcast cannot continue without your support. Please consider sending a donation to TV Mass at Post Office Box 588, Winona, Minnesota 55987.